Some time ago we discussed the upcoming game mode for Windows 10, and while Microsoft did give us a few sort of hints as to what to expect from this particular game mode and what implications it has for performance as well as how it's going to work, we have a bit more information for you today. Now this information is actually from a little while ago, but it was only just brought to my attention. However, they did discuss that game mode will actually dedicate a certain number of CPU cores to game rendering, rather than allowing other background tasks to be scheduled concurrently on those chips. And this is according to a rather helpful report from Ars Technica. Now obviously anyone who has PC gamed for any real amount of time will know exactly what I'm talking about here. You often see when trying to get the best performance from a game that you've all got all sorts of things running in the background that might be hogging resources that are getting keeping you from getting maybe an extra few frames per second or maybe just overall smoother experience. But it's of course talking about task scheduling as well, which is something that of course we have seen come into problem territory for Ryzen recently, of course. Go to watch Paul's video on that if you want to know the skinny on that. However, the TLDR of all of this is that at the moment an 8 core system might only have 6 cores dedicated to the game, while other tasks will be dedicated to the remaining 2 cores. Now, of course, there's always going to be some performance dedicated to, you know, stuff like, you know, running the OS in the background and whatever, but this basically will mean that more of the CPU will be dedicated to gaming, which, depending on your system, should see a minimal increase as we've also seen on the GPU side. Now, when it comes to graphics cards, most of it is already dedicated to the game because, well, it doesn't really have that much else to do, especially if you're playing in a dedicated full screen as opposed to borderless windowed. Now, despite this, game mode is going to dedicate even more GPU power to games and less to background tasks, while also keeping more of the game's data in a local RAM for easier loading, so even snappier loading times and less pop-in and stuff like that as well. Now, again, this is going to see an increase, but a fairly minimal one. This is going to be the 2-5% to range for most systems. Early tests of game mode didn't really show any difference, that most of the difference fell well within the margin of error. But of course, this isn't yet publicly released on Windows 10, so it is entirely possible that by the time it is actually released to the public, we will be seeing a more tangible difference in performance. Now one last thing that I want to touch on before I close off this video is actually UWP, which was also discussed in the same breath as game mode, obviously, literally, but you get what I'm saying. Now many people, including myself, but obviously the most famous would be Tim Sweeney, have been pretty critical of UWP, and it seems their limitations reach even to the Xbox One as well. As apparently, let's say you're a developer, and you want to take your UWP game over to the Xbox One. And well... You can do that, but the limitations on doing this are actually kind of insane. They have to fit what is a fairly ridiculous quote app performance envelope in order to run on the Xbox One. Apparently, UWP apps and games can only use 4 of the 8 CPU cores, 50% of the GPU power, and 1 gigabyte out of 8 of system memory, which basically means that, yeah most games are not going to be able to meet these requirements because, well, they're absolutely insane. So, it seems that the limitations of UWP are even more than we've realised, and I wonder why anyone would choose to use the UWP over anything else, really. At the moment, of course, it's uh, mostly Microsoft published games that are being on the UWP platform, so obviously you know, they have a console variation as well, but you know, for any other developer, then you better get cracking on those requirements, son. I mean, to be honest, going back to game mode for a minute, it all sounds fine, you know, dedicating less CPU cores to, you know, rubbish background tasks and making the GPU more efficient is great, but you're really only going to see a small difference. You know, not that I'm hating on the small difference, you know, an increase in performance is still an increase in performance and it's still an increase in efficiency at the end of the day, but it is going to be fairly small. You're not going to be seeing a huge jump from this, really, because, you know, the tech that you have is still the tech that you have at the end of the day. But, of course, we should wait and see the final results of game mode, but while, you know, I'll be 
play something surprised and happy if we see actual significant margins. I'll be surprised if we see more than the early reports have shown. Unless Microsoft have got something really clever up their sleeves, which, you know, is possible. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.